In today's episode, we're going to do a beginner's tutorial on how to make a digital architecture portfolio in InDesign. We're going to run through all the steps covering off document setup, layouts, the logic around your workflow, using master pages, tips and tricks, and how to make good layouts and content. Once you've opened up InDesign, you're going to want to create a new document. Go to the top of the page and click File, New, Document, or push Control N. We're going to go to Web because this is a digital document and it's going to be viewed on screens. We're going to click A4, go over to the right, change the units to millimetres. We're going to have portrait facing pages and we're going to have facing pages box ticked. What this does is this will have spreads of two pages next to each other like you have when you open up a book. If that box is not ticked, you'll just get one page per spread. It's best to have this if you want to send your document as a PDF because it will retain each page next to each other. I'm going to adjust the margins to be 10 millimetres and I'm going to leave all of the bleed and other settings as they are. Just simply click create and your new document will be made. So now we've got our new document here. It's only got one page and we're looking at a blank InDesign layout. What I like to do now is customize my workspace. I like to open up some new windows, add some toolbars and menus so I get greater functionality out of the window. At the moment you can see everything's really closed up and there's not many options around on the page. So what you do is go to the top of the window, click on the window tab, Go to workspace and then click on essentials classic that's the one i like to start with you can see we've got a few more tabs opened out and a few more items open on the toolbar at the top so what i'll start to do is remove this creative cloud libraries window because i don't use that often i'm going to open up the pages and the layers tab i'm going to drag this window out and add it to its own column on the right hand side i like to have the layers tab as their own window so i'll drag that to the bottom and then we've got pages, links and layers as their own elements on the right hand side of the page. Some other tabs I like to have open are swatches. So I'll click on that tab to open that out. I'm going to drag that out and dock that at the top of the window on the right hand side. So I'm going to drag the swatches window out and then I'm going to delete these items here as I don't use them. I'm going to dock the swatches tab on the right hand side. So now you can add a few more elements to your workspace. I'm going to go to window, going to go to objects and layout, align. I want Pathfinder to come with that as well and I dock that at the bottom of the window on the right here. Then I'm also going to get some paragraph and text options. So I'm going to go to type and tables. I'm going to go to paragraph and I'm going to open that out. I'm going to dock that on the right hand side. I'm then going to get the properties window. So I'm going to go window properties. I like to have that in between stroke and paragraph. I'm going to delete the CC libraries because I don't need that. And then we're going to go from there. And the last one I'm going to do is just get my paragraph styles window open. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to drag this out because I want that to be above paragraph but below properties. I don't use character styles for now and style packs. I'm going to delete that as well. So now that our workspace is more functional, we actually have some windows open and the ability to click on buttons and start actually using InDesign. We're going to move on to setting up a baseline grid. I'm going to quickly add in some new pages. So you just go to the pages tab, click on this little box with a plus to create some new pages and then we'll have our document beginning to set up. Before we get stuck into creating the portfolio and starting to work on the layout, I'm going to run through some of the logic around the workflow that I like to use when creating a portfolio or using InDesign in general. So if you consider the set out of the portfolio or the composition or the elements that make up a good portfolio, you effectively have four or five parts. You have the title page, which will be the first page. Then you'll have a mini CV or kind of about you page. We might include a little bit about who you are, your skills, your education, things like that. Contact information as well. The next page will be the contents page. And then you'll get into the meat of your portfolio where you'll run through some of your projects and your work. I'd say you probably wouldn't want any more than five projects in a portfolio unless you specifically ask for it. If you're applying for a specific job and you know what it is, tailor the projects for it. Otherwise, I would create a wide range of projects to demonstrate your varying levels of skills and familiarity with building types maybe you've done a little bit of furniture or art or photography something like that as well just to show that you're a well-rounded creative person with a wide range of skills you want to demonstrate all the skills that you have but you want to keep it concise as well you don't want it to be too long so again i would stick to three to five projects unless you're asked to do more and keep your portfolio short i'd say between 15 16 if you can 
Now I've got another video on 10 tips to make the best architecture portfolio possible. I recommend watching that video after this. The way that we work with InDesign is that you have a set of pages where you align your content and on those pages you place content which can range from text, images, symbols, graphics, anything like that. And similarly to Photoshop and Illustrator and other apps, there's a layer system and you've got all your objects on your layers and you work through around it like that. Then what you're going to do is you're going to use a series of master pages. Think of it as a template for your page so you can reuse it and you can apply that to each page without having to copy and paste things individually. And then on top of that, what you do for text is you use paragraph styles that will have all your preset text settings. And then if you need to edit the text later, you don't have to individually go through and edit each piece of text. You just change the paragraph style. That change will be made to all of the text with that paragraph our style applied to it. Once you've set up your paragraph styles and your layers and all of your objects, you go through and create your master pages, which are like a template or a layout. And then you just go through and add in your content as you need. And then you've got your created portfolio and it can be edited quickly and easily. And it's really neatly set up and it's good to go. So now if we jump back into the meat of the tutorial on actually making the portfolio, the first step is just doing a little bit more setting up of the document before we get into adding some elements. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add some new layers. I'm going to start with one layer and I'm going to call that text. Then we're going to have a layer called images or drawings might have another layer called guides. And this is for any elements that you don't want to print or just elements that you're going to use to help you align your page and you can delete them later. I like to have this layer set to untick the print box, which means that anything on this layer won't print. So I'm just going to make sure we have the correct number of pages before we start. We're going to have one, the first page being the cover, then we're going to have the mini bio or the mini CV and then the contents page. And then I'm going to want five sets of spreads. And then we're going to want one final page for the end cover. So now we're going to start working on our master pages. I'm just going to drag this divider down so we can see all of our pages. And then you can also see at the top here where the master pages will occur. Now, what a master page is, is it's a set template of a page layout, which will be saved in your pages window. And then you can apply that master page to individual pages, which will allow you to repeat and standardize your layout. So what you do to create a master page is you right click in the pages window and go new parent. I'm going to call this 00 cover because it's going to be the master page for the cover. We're going to go based on parent none. So we're just going to create a master page. So you want to right click and go new parent we're going to call it 00 and we're going to call it cover because it's going to be for the cover page based on parent none number of pages one and leave all of that as is so now you can see we're editing the cover page now in your master pages what you can do is you can start putting in grid lines to set a grid line you can simply drag from the rulers on the left hand side but what you want to do if you don't have rulers is just use Control r that will toggle the rulers on and off. I like to work with them on. To help us with our layout, I wanna set a standard grid across all of our pages that will help us to align items and not have things floating around randomly in space. So to turn our baseline grid on, you go to edit, preferences, grids, go up the top to baseline grids. We're gonna go start at zero, so it starts at the top of the page, relative to the top of page, and we want it to increment every 10 millimeters. And we're going to click OK. Now you go to View, Grids and Guides and go Show Baseline Grid. Or you can do Control Alt Apostrophe. That will turn our grids on. I think these grids are probably a little bit broad. So I'm going to go back to my preferences and go to Grid. We're going to change that to increment every five millimeters. Now you have a more closely spaced grid. So now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a guide for our main image on the front cover page. So I'm going to use a rectangle for this. You can push M for the rectangle tool or click it on the sidebar. I'm going to drag this rectangle until it meets the margins. And I'm going to change the properties so that it has a black fill. So we want the tint to be 10. Now we're just going to drag this to be a little bit taller on the page. We're going to leave that at 215 mil. I actually think that the margins in this document are probably a little bit too narrow for the layout that I'm going to go for. So I'm going to edit that. You can go to layout, margins and columns. And we're going to adjust them. I uh, might try 15. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to want to add some text for the title because this is the cover page. Now make sure that your text is on the text layer and that your guide for the image is on the guides layer. So we're just going to call it folio. And now we can use these guides to align our text. What we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to align this text to the right hand side. So just select the text box and then in the paragraph window on the bottom right, we can change it to align right. And we want to make sure that this text is probably going to want to be bigger. I'm going to change this maybe to 30 point. Now we're going to go and also select font type. I'm going to go with a sans serif font. So 
have a look through the list of fonts in here and you note that there's a way to filter them, click on filter. I'm going to go with a more minimalist look for this portfolio. So I'm going to use sans serif and one of the ones I like to use is Swiss. And I think I'm going to use Swiss 721 BT bold for this. And one other thing I'm going to do now, like we discussed previously, is we're going to set this as a paragraph style. So I'm going to click in the paragraph style window and go create new style. I'm going to right click and go apply paragraph style one. Then we're going to also edit this paragraph style and call it title underscore one. So we're just going to check all of the character settings are as per what we just set. So click yes. And now even though we've got our portfolio title text box here, what we're actually also going to want to do is we're going to want to have a kind of subheading, but you can see this text is just not right. So what I'm going to do is go up to the text box and look for another Swiss font in a thinner variety. I'm going to use Swiss 721 LTBT Lite. I'm going to apply that to this text box and I'm going to reduce the text size to 10 maybe. And now just take note, we're using our grids. We're aligning from the top of the grid. So all of our text is aligned to the top of the text box. And then we're going to align the text box to the top of each each grid line rather than the bottom. And now I'm going to create a new text style and call this mini title underscore one. Now another piece of text you might want on this page is the date. So I'm just going to copy this and there's two ways you can copy in InDesign. You can just control C, control V, or you can click on the object you want to copy, hold down Alt and click and drag and that will copy it even further. So I'm going to put a little date down the bottom here. So we might say 2024. And now when you want to print preview and see what the page is going to look like without any of the grid showing up, just push W and then everything will just reduce down to its most minimalist form. And you can see anything that's not going to get printed disappears as well. So that box that we're using to show where we're going to place our cover image won't show in print preview. So now that we're done using this cover master page, I'm going to double click on any page in our document to go back to our document workspace. And as you can see, the cover page is not showing anywhere here. But that's because what we just created was a master page and that hasn't been applied to any pages. What I'm going to do is apply this cover master page to the first page in our document. Simply click and drag the master page onto the page we want to apply in the page window. And so now that I've clicked and released that, it's been applied to the first page. So the next page we're going to make is going to be the contents page and the mini CV or bio page. So I'm going to create a new master page. So go right click new parent. We're going to call this uh, 00 and then we're going to say CV contents based on parent. We're going to leave that as none number of pages to a4 OK OK. So then we're going to go and create another text box and we're going to have project number and then the contents. So I'm going to put in a placeholder and change the size so that it fits within three grid lines. Now I'm going to change the text. I want this to be about 36 points and then we're going to create a new paragraph style. We're going to call this um, contents header and now I'm actually just going to go to our paragraph styles window here and what I'm going to do is create a group. So we're going to create a new style group. We're going to move the two title headings in and we're going to call this cover page because they are the styles used on the cover page and then I'm going to create another group and I'm going to call that CV contents. I'm just going to drag the contents header into the CV contents page just to keep things consistent and I'm going to copy this using alt shift again and just drag it over to the left. Now I actually want a number over here on the left and I want it always to be aligned to the left. So you can see at the moment what's happening is the text box is aligning the text to the right so we're going to change that to align left in the paragraph. Now one of the tools you can use to reduce the space in a text box is push control alt c and that will minimize the text box and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and i'm just going to select both of these and just copy them down every three spaces and you can see this is when the grids start to make it really easy it's really easy to align everything out rationally so now we've done the contents page in the master pages i'm going to apply that master page to my spread so that i can see what it looks like and then i'm going to go ahead and start editing the master page for our mini cv page i like to have this page adjacent the contents page and being the first page that you see when you open the portfolio so that anyone reading your portfolio gets a little bit about you some of your skills and, and most importantly your contact information so i'm going to go ahead and just copy one of these text boxes over here i'm going to edit all of the text later but i'm going to roughly stick with the same grid lines and layouts as the page on the right to keep it consistent so what i'm going to do is edit the text and we're going to have our name at the top now i want that text to be left orient left aligned so i'm going to click on the 
left aligned bar at the top and then I'm going to copy this down just one grid spacing and have our last name. I'm going to change the text for this to a lighter text so we give emphasis to the surname just for a bit of visual clarity and you can see that's a little bit better. So now the other thing that you would have on this page is you would probably have a picture of yourself so I'm going to go ahead and on the guides layer place a rectangle which is going to indicate where the headshot would go. So I've just drawn a rectangle and I'm going to adjust the stroke and fill properties so that it's a 10% grey box just so we can see where it is on the page and I'm going to have that aligned to the top of our text here. Now I'm just going to adjust the width to be 60 by 75 and that fits in with our grid line here as well. So I've just dropped this grid line on 140 mil on the page or 60 mil off the boundary. Now I'm actually going to add another grid line here and we know that that grid line is at 140 so I want 10 millimeters apart so I'm going to set the x value to 130 millimeters. Another thing you can do is draw a frame as a guide and change the width to 10 mil just so we can use this as a known spacer. So you can see that fits perfectly in there. So now the second type of text you're going to want is you're going to want a little bit of your contact information. So we're just going to put a mobile number. I'm going to change it to Roman and we're going to put this at about 15. Now I'm going to create a new, a new paragraph style for this and I'm going to call it CV contact. And now I'm going to push Control Alt C to minimize the text box to its smallest dimensions. I'm going to have three of these because what we're actually going to want is we're going to want your mobile number, we're going to want your email. What I'm going to do is equally space these three text boxes apart because I don't think that aligning them on the grid lines gives you a nice enough gap. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the align window, make sure it's set to align to selection and push distribute vertical spacing and what that does is equalizes the spacing of the set. So you can see if we had a more extreme example it equalizes the spacing between all three. I'm also going to drag this down so it's aligned with the underside of our profile photo page. So now we're going to want to have a little bit of about us tech and I'm actually you're going to have a header text because I want this to say about me. I'm also going to adjust this down to be 12 point. I actually think that this text here, the CV contact, I think that might actually make more sense if we adjust the character style to Swiss light. And then I'm going to adjust this text box here. I'm going to create a new style and call it CV body header to be a Swiss BT, slightly thicker text just so it stands out. And now with this text box, I'm just fill it with some placeholder text. I'm going to right click and select fill with placeholder text. That's obviously too large. So I'm going to size that down and then I'm going to adjust the justification. So that the last line is left aligned. And now I'm going to make another paragraph style and I'm going to call it CV body because this is the body text of our CV. So I'm going to bring this header down and align it with the underside of each of these numbers on the right hand side so that there's some consistency and I'm actually going to have some additional ones of these. I'm going to basically run two columns similarly to how we're doing on the right and then I'm going to have work experience then we're going to have skills and we're also going to have extras. I'm going to copy this text down to just put a placeholder and I'm going to use be holding shift and alt as we drag this down which will copy it into place and then I'm just going to quickly drag that text box to fill just the amount of room that we are looking for. So I'm just going to go through now and complete this section and then I'll come back to you once it's finished. So now you can see that our mini CV and contents page is complete. So now we're going to move on to the body of our portfolio and we're going to start creating the actual content spreads. So what we're going to do before we do this is I'm going to make a new master page which is going to serve as a base for all of the spread templates and all this master is going to have is just a grid set out which is going to help us align content on the page. So while these mini grids here are useful we're going to want a slightly larger grid on this page to help us aligning content when we're working with bigger images and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click new parent. We're just going to have one page. I'm going to have prefix A and then I'm going to call it grid master. So I'm going to show you a trick to make a grid of elements in InDesign. What you're going to do is you're going to click on the rectangle tool. So you want to click in the top left hand corner of the page margin and go all the way right down to the bottom and now without releasing your mouse you're going to use the arrow keys to add columns and we're going to go all the way until we have six and then use the up and down arrows to add rows and again we're going to add 13 rows by six columns and then you just click and release and all of your elements will be there and what this is going to help us do is actually set up some grids so I'm going to go over to the guides layer and then we're going to click and drag from the ruler some grids to create our layout here on the page and we're going 
gonna wanna make sure that that snaps to the edge of all of these boxes. So now that that's done, I'm gonna delete all of these grid squares and now we've got these on the guides layer and set as our base. It's gonna double click back into the main portion of our document. So now I'm gonna create a new parent page for our layout. So I'm just gonna call it A layout because it's gonna be the first layout that we're gonna work with. And I'm gonna have based on parent A grid master and we're gonna click OK. So now you can see we've got a master page that uses another master page as a base to create the grids. So now I'm just gonna create some boxes which are gonna represent the images in this spread and I'm gonna work with the grids as a guide. Again, I'll just change the settings on these so that they're easier to see and not too overpowering. So I'm gonna have the aspect ratio of these set to two by four grid boxes and then we're gonna have three across the top here. I'm gonna leave a double grid space open at the top and this is gonna give us a nice spot to put our headings and titles. Okay. So now we're just going to add a heading to the top of each page. Um, I'm just going to put in some filler text. As usual, we're going to create a new paragraph style. Now I'm going to duplicate this heading across to this page here because we're going to want two, one for each page. And I'm actually going to add a second set of images here. And then the second type of text we're going to want is some description text. So I'm just going to edit this down to be Swiss light and we're going to reduce the, set, the size of this right down. Make a new paragraph style as usual and we're going to call this spread body and then I'm just going to add a caption to each one of these and you might want a short text description here and I'm just going to fill that with placeholder text to change the justification. And now in the page on the left, I think we're going to go with one large image. It's always good to have variation between your pages just so that you get a bit of contrast and you can draw attention to different types of image or drawing types. And you're also going to want a caption for that image there. So what I think we're missing now is we're missing a page number and then the project heading, which we want to keep consistent across all of the pages that relate to that project. So I'm just going to add a new title down the bottom. And I think it's also worth reducing the text size here to be a light text and we're going to want that to be bottom justified. I'm just going to quickly edit those settings, copy that across to the page and then create a new style. So now that we're done with that spread we're going to click back out into our actual pages of the project and then we're going to apply those to the pages here and now you can see we're starting to build out our portfolio. So now the last thing missing is the page number so I'm going to add a text box to the bottom left and right corner of the page and we're going to create a new paragraph style and call that page number. Of, and I'm just going to make this text box on the right have a line right because we want the page number to always be in the bottom corner of the page. Now the way you can set the automatically updating page number is right click inside the text box, click insert special characters, markers and then current page number. Now what that does is it puts a little placeholder character in your text box which will automatically update with the current page number no matter where the page is in the document. Now I'm just going to go and add this to all of the layouts in our document so that we're consistent and then as you can see if you click back into your page the numbers are automatically updating based on where the page is in the document. So now if you wanted to go about actually placing images into the drawing what you can do is use the link command or the place command so you could either go to file place or you can push the shortcut Control D navigate to where the file you'd like to place is on your computer select it and then it will simply come into the layout and then you can just place this image in the correct layout position and edit the frame to suit. So if you go through and complete this process, you get to a stage where your document has started to fill out all of the drawings in the locations that you need it. So I'm not going to show you how I created each of these individual layouts because it's effectively up to you how you're going to lay out your portfolio. But some of the things I would recommend you consider are utilizing a range of image sizes and layouts so that you can run through things such as having a hero image on the page and then having smaller snapshots all on one page. You want to keep your portfolio concise but you also also want to give the right amount of room to some of the more complicated and intricate drawings so you can really get to show them off. Um, programs used to create your drawings and models, images, things like that. So have a look at experimenting based on that and then start to input your images once you have a layout that suits. Thanks for watching that video everyone. I hope it's helped you make a really good portfolio. If you don't have time like most architecture students, I've actually got the InDesign template for this architecture portfolio up on my Gumroad for sale. You can buy it and just easily drop in all of your content. It's got heaps of cover pages, master pages, layout spreads, things like that. It's going to make it really easy for you to get your portfolio up and running really quick. Jump on my Gumroad, link is in the bio and I'm going to put a discount code in the description and you'll get a nice 10% off. 
thanks everyone for watching and if you haven't checked out my other video on portfolios, I recommend you check that out.